Good evening, Cebu. Good evening, Philippines. It's open mic night tonight, and you know, not it's not only the the May 2016 elections that's uh, upcoming, but also student council elections in different universities throughout Cebu and even across the size of Mindanao. And this is something that's very close to my heart. Uh, for me, I started with campus politics, and uh, so I think it's only up that uh, I pay tribute to where it all began for me uh, as a person. Uh, probably the, one of the most, uh, if not the most influential uh, force in my life, aside from my family and my faith, uh, is the Tingog Carolinian Party. And uh, it has changed so many people's lives, no? And uh, for the better. And uh, redirected us into something more positive, something uh, more proactive and more constructive. And uh, so every year, for 15 consecutive years since I was recruited to Tingog, that's in the University of San Carlos, in 2001. Every year, I always find time, no matter how busy I am, no matter where life takes me, I always find time to return to USC and to meet uh, the new batch of recruits to the Tingog Carolinian Party. And so tonight, uh, this will be uh, a different format, slightly different format, still one-on-one, -on -one, but not Q&A because I think I have as much to say about the topic as our guest tonight. So it'll be more conversational, not your typical Q&A. So tonight we have running for president uh, of the Supreme Student Council of the University of San Carlos, Mr. Brett Balbuena. Brett? Yes. Hi, Mike. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yes, sure. Welcome to the show. Yeah. And uh, well, I won't welcome you to Tingog because you have been with Tingog for, for a while. Um, so you're running for president. I am, I am. Why are you running for president? You have not been in the Supreme Student Council. You are not a councillor, but why are you running for president? Uh, I believe I'm running for president for three reasons. First, experience. Having been engaged in different organizations, JP, uh, SB Council, and even Junior JCs. I believe you were part of Junior JCs before. But I was not president. Yeah. I was and executive vice president, so you're yeah. much more and accomplished than me. <laughs> not, no. But having been engaged in all these organizations, all these activities, having met different types of people of all walks of life, I've realized that there's really so much more that we can do. That's why for my, for my fifth year, I'd like to dedicate myself to the entire Carolinian community. In fact, uh, that's what, uh, that's, the, that's your unique selling proposition, yeah. as opposed to the you know, candidates from the two other parties, because you are the only one running for office who has been president, of both an extra and a co-curricular organization. And that is super unique, no? Uh, so that's the, that's the wealth of experience and insight you bring into running for office. Definitely, Mike. Uh, and the uh, Junior JCs under your term, by the way, was yeah. awarded Outstanding Campus Student yeah. Organization. Thank God, and my officers. Yeah. Well, yes, because it's always a team effort, no? Definitely. And, and uh, you are president now of JPA, the Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants. Um, and I'm, you're also no nominated for this year's Outstanding yes. Campus Student Organization yes. Award. And if I could also add, we actually garnered the most outstanding local chapter in the National wow. Federation for JPA. The N NFJPA? Yes. The former president of the NFJPA passed, I know it was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, but why Tingog? Uh, you joined Tingog when and why Tingog? I mean, there's, there's yeah. three parties acti always actively recruiting. Why did you choose Tingog? Actually, Thank you for choosing us, but yes, why? Definitely. Uh, it's actually funny because people actually tell me, Brett, did you just spring out or sprung, did you sprung out of Tingog like just now? And then when I tell them I've, I've actually been part of Tingog for four years now, it's funny because the first person who contacted me was Stephen Flores uh, and Leandro, Leandro Pelenio. So it, I came out from high school and then during summer, these two people actually contacted me, oriented me on Tingog and then eventually, I just like the people there, their principles, and like what they what they stand for, what they, what they are for. So I believe I've always so I've always believed that I should. I I mean, my idea is that Tingog is a is a party that truly delivers because the people there are of quality. And you've heard about it even when you're in high school. Definitely. No, but the thing is, what people don't know this this whole uh, recruitment process when we scout for for prospective uh, uh, not just candidates, no, but. Yeah. Uh, Prospective members, it's a lot like uh, when X Men scouts for mutants. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 
there's like a professor Xavier with Cerebro and then bam 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 different you know different schools different and then we already uh, spot talent you know we spot talent but uh, what uh, people do not know is that it doesn't matter you know if you're popular if you're winnable if you're uh, if you have track record but if your principles, your means and methods do not align with our party, then we may, we may, we may even, when I give an orientation to student leaders before, you know, I would I would try to give them uh, the entire spectrum of things. Tingog, this is how Tingog does it, this is how the other party does it, this is the other, I don't know where the other party is, but um, <laughs> but if you're more comfortable with, with how the extreme left, the more militant uh, uh, ways of the other party, if you're more comfortable with that, then I'd even probably recommend you if you want. I can recommend you there because they uh, they serve they also serve a purpose, right? So because we don't force just because you're winnable or, or, or you have the credentials. Yeah, it's really up to you to choose you, which party you want to align with because exactly. it's your principles that you want, you're promoting. Yes, speaking of principles, uh, is that uh, are our principles uh, a reason, a, a main reason, a major reason for you for joining Tingo? Yeah, definitely. I could state some of the principles we practice active nonviolence. So we believe that there are better methods to actually solve a problem and that it's taking the battle to where it counts and to where it matters. Another principle we have is servant leadership. I believe that us student leaders should be should practice servant leadership because it's it's by showing it's by walking the talk that you're able to inspire more people but that, that you're able to empower more people and I think that's leadership in in the general sense. You know, servant leadership, that's a new addition because Tingo, we have a set of principles and we constantly revisit them, no? uh, you know, from time to time. After five or ten years, we revisit our principles and see which ones are still relevant yeah. Yeah. and which, and maybe we can add. No? Uh, if we look at the, how the party has been, if we've grown, if we ventured into uh, new, uh, you know, into new direction, into a new direction. So servant le leadership is a recent addition. It was added precisely because even if it was not articulated as a, as a principle, it was practiced. Yeah. And in my experience, you know, I, I'll tell you, when I, when I joined Tingog, um, I had a sense of entitlement. Okay. I had an arrogance, <laughs> an intellectual arrogance, like, okay, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, I, I had that. But uh, personally, my parents always were always very, you know, they're always very humble and very simple people. But the fabulosity of my other relatives often clashed with that. And of course, the fabulous people are more attractive. The more, the more, uh, they're more fun. No, it, that was the, my dis, that was the dissonance within. So I was confused, no, okay. because the example of the fabulous relatives was far more uh, interesting, fascinating. But in Tingog. Uh, I learned that uh, it's really the work you do. It's uh, it's the work you do. It's the battles you fight. Uh, it's the life you lead. Yeah. It's the love you have in your heart. It's those are the things that are important, ultimately. And I think throughout my journey in Tingog, servant leadership. I don't know if I'm a servant leader, but th there is really a shift of priorities. When you're there, you think that you want to conquer the world. Success is about position, about prestige, about power. Power. But in Tingog, you realize, no, it's more than that. So in little things, no, in like my class, they say, oh, you drive the oldest car in the world. Yeah, it's been, it's been my car since when I was Tingog, more than 10 years already. Uh -huh. But I don't feel, uh, I don't feel ashamed. I don't, it's, it still works, it's practical. That's what Tingog taught me. These are little things no, that, that affect how you see, how you see life. So um, that's right, no? servant leadership is something very important and human dignity yeah. is very important to us. But, uh, weren't you attracted to how the other party does it? Because the other party, um, they like to put up a show. Um, true. I'm not saying that they're less sincere, yeah. but their methods are very extreme and they like to go out in the streets, rally, and you know, for a young person, it might, it might uh, not, uh, not mislead, no? but it can enticing. appear enticing because yeah. you have, you know, when we're young, we're burning with idealism. Yeah. And of course, you'd, you'd be attracted to something that has, uh, you know, that does something like that. Yeah. But why did you choose Tingog, a more sober, more okay. strategic, more intelligent uh, means? Okay. Uh, again, I think it goes back to my being, to my principles, because I'm a type of person who values critical thinking. And then if you really digest the problem, there's a better and more efficient way of solving it. And not just putting up a show, trying to impress other people. It's about 
really attacking the core problem, the roots of the problem. Because if you keep attacking the surface of the problem, then you're you're using this, you're using the right medicine to the wrong wrong wound, right? So, yeah, yeah so something it's, it's, like that. It's very super. I guess it's superficial. Um, I remember I was recruited first by the other party, okay. and uh, then at that time the tuition increase. Uh, which they call TFI, but it's redundant because tuition is a fee. So you say don't tuition fee increase. So tuition increase, uh, they they kept us from attending our classes and they put uh, crap papers, you know, red crap papers at the entrance of the Talamban campus. And, and well, not that I was extra studious, but I had a plate to finish. Okay. And, and then they were barring us from entering because they were demanding that we boycott our classes. I was not yet with Tingo, okay? We were demanding that we boycott our classes. And I said, but I have a plate to submit. Yeah. So no, but you have to be one with us uh, to fight tuition increase. Go well, right. you know, my heart goes out to you, but if I fail my subjects, will you talk to my parents? I said, basta, basta. And then, appeal, appeal, appeal. And I said, okay, whatever. I mean, you know, I went inside. And everybody who attended their classes, who walked through that, uh, the, the, that crepe paper, which apparently was supposedly a red carpet, they clapped and it was humili very humiliating. And so when they recruited me eventually in the second semester, I said, were you the ones responsible for that? Because they were so proud, fighting tuition increase. I said, uh, well, I don't think we're aligned, you know, because that's not how, uh, you know, I think when you say you're pro you protect students' rights, you not embarrass us just because yeah. we don't uh, have the same sure. methods. Um, but later on, there was a time when, there, when that party wanted to be more like us. And I remember I have friends from that party who said, no, we want to be more like, like Tingog, etc. I said, no, you cannot. You cannot. You have to stay that way. Yeah. Be yourself. <laughs> because, because you provide a purpose. You know, yeah. there is a purpose for your existence in the university. Because you, uh, you uh, some ad students identify with how you do things. Yeah. If you try to become like us, which is thank you, because imitation is the best form of flattery, but if you try to become like us, what happens to these students who like the more militant way of doing things? Yes. You are disenfranchising them. And there are times when, you, like after martial law, I mean, you know, EDSA, that was the popular uh, means. means yeah. So I said, I said, you cannot. You will destroy the core of your part if you try to be more like us. But thank you for wanting to be more like us. <laughs> but see, uh, Tingo is uh, Tingo, uh, USC actually is a microcosm of Philippine society, of society in general, and then, you know you have a political spectrum like that. But we are independent. Yeah. Uh, that's why in uh, we are proposing that we add an organization. No, uh, it, as a party. As a party. One of our principles that we might uh, adopt uh, uh, when we have a summit later on this year is that we are a party that is uh, independent and democratic. Why do we say independent and democratic? Why do we spell it out? Because we are independent from external groups. We are not affiliated with CPP, NPA, NDF. Our existence is... Uh, what's that? Uh, League of Filipino Students? No. We do not. We are not affiliated with that. With any organization. We yeah. exist within USC. And we are independent from the administration. And our independence is strengthened by our principle of democracy among the party, among our members. So we have to vote on uh, especially very important policy statements. But, uh, you know, our time is up for this, for this gap. We have to pause for the short break and let's talk more about uh, campus politics when open mic returns. We're back here at Open Mic with Brett Balbuena. Hi, Brett. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Feeling nervous. Yeah. No. Um, anyway, you were talking about uh, the parties, uh, Tingo Carolinian parties, principles, and uh, track record. Yeah. So, what's the track record of Tingo? Can you expound yeah. on, on this track record? I think it's better of? if I speak of Tingo's story. Uh, if you could see our slate right now, it's a very diversified group. We have JD Abines, our incumbent SSC counselor, co author of the Magna Carta of Students' Rights and Welfare. We have different people coming from different courses. We have different skills and talents, and yes, we complement each other. That's why, come March 10, 2016, I really hope that the entire Carolinian community supports Tingog Carolinian Party. 
because we celebrate diversity. But amidst this diversity, we know that we can work things out. We can use our strengths to complement each other. But how do you prepare for something like that? Because you speak of diversity, different personalities, different perspectives, probably different advocacies. No? Uh, and then, well, I, I assume that you are all bound by a common uh, vision and a common, uh, a common uh, set of principles. No? But how do you make sure, as a leader, as the captain of the ship, how do you make sure that all of this diverse team, that you can all work together, that you gel together? I think it's always a collective effort because if I could also share another story, we, we have team buildings, we talk about issues because before we create platforms, we have to talk about issues that are relevant, that are, that are, that are, that are real, that are happening in the institution. That's why uh, a few weeks ago, we had a team building, we talked, we, we connected each, with each other, we talked, well, like, we were able to talk about each, each other's strengths, weaknesses, so we can work on it and we can actually address them. And yes, I mentioned about issues. We talk about current issues in the institution because we want to have platforms that are again relevant, that are that are that could actually make a difference in the Carolinians' lives. And uh, well, speaking of preparation, I was talking to some of the alumni. Uh, you were training literally in extreme weather conditions yeah. <laughs> <laughs> inside a freezer. So <laughs> literally inside the freezer. So. Uh, you know, if Karate Kid and you know all these <laughs> movie heroes train in extreme uh, environments, so did Tingog, quite literally, no, yeah. inside the freezer. The freezer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you can, in sub-zero temperatures, no, if you can manage to still speak and uh, articulate your thoughts without uh, being all bundled up, then I guess you are ready for anything, no? <laughs> Come hell or high water, right? So. Uh, but uh, this track record, this is a long. I mean, are you, I'm sure you're familiar with our history, right? Um, are there is, is there anything that you'd like to particularly point out to? I uh, point out, no, na, that uh, makes you proud of Tino. Because no. you know, there's a tendency, there's a tendency for students to just listen to po to campus politicians and say, ah, oh, this is the same old speech, yeah. no? Yeah. Uh, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Makes you feel good. But really, what same have they promises. done? Yeah, same old promises, but do, do they really improve uh, our lot in life, at least as regards to the university? I believe you're more experienced than me, Mike. But for my four years in, in the university, yes, there are a lot of projects that I'd like to actually point out. First, I discount. Uh, a lot of my friends are actually gym enthous enthusiasts. So like, they really were, they really showed their gratitude when they said, Bye, salamat kayo ha, like, through I discount. Among, among bayad sa, the, sa holiday gym, kay 1,000 na lang. So, marag, these are really the relevant marag, gaps we choose to address. Because, again, it is the students' needs we want to address and promote. It's nice yeah. that uh, I discount has lived on. We started that in 2005. Um, Eric Lim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the par, uh, project share. It was my idea because they wanted a discount card. Yeah. Initially, it was a discount card. But they said, why not make the ID a discount okay. card itself so that you don't have to spend, uh, you know, uh, use plastic. Uh, and after what 10 years you still have still I discount here. but yeah. those are the little things um, in the past even before I was thinking uh, the, the the drinking fountains at the main campus yeah. uh, that was it was a, a result of successful uh, lobbying and uh, hard work from, from the thing yeah. people before us um, I remember when I was still a student um, in the early 2000s and I had classes at the AS building. I don't know if it's still call it that, arts and sciences. There was there was no SAFAD building or health and uh, what do you call that? Health healthcare professionals, school of healthcare healthcare professionals. The building, it was just the AS, and it was so dusty because the roads are anapog. And I remember uh, Tingo Councilor June Alfontan. He really lobbied to the fathers to make sure that it's paved, and they didn't want to. They didn't want to pave it because they were still going to build Safad and they were still going to build other buildings, etc. And the library and uh, and maguba ako no. But Alfontan said, then you then you pave it again. Otherwise, give us a clinic at the AS building because people have asthma, yeah. you know. Um, so they paved it. So little things. I mean, maybe yeah. the, I don't know if it's little or big, but they matter. Yeah, and people don't know. Yeah. People don't know that because we don't rally and say this yeah. is what we've done. No? In the ATM exactly. at the main campus, <laughs> uh, there was a three-year moratorium and tuition increase in the 90s. And this is uh, behind closed doors. 
So um, there's a lot, no? And that's that's external. That's a part. That's uh, as student leaders in the council. But as a party, we've also done uh, a lot in terms of innovating, uh, you, know, you know, innovation in terms of uh, how we campaign, paraphernalia, and kainumdum ko mga students before ang tingog no social yung kain na sila they always come up with all these new ideas on <laughs> paraphernalia whether it's comics a caricature statement shirts we were we were the first ban you know banners throughout uh, the you know uh, the covered walk and then I tell them I even how we count how we because before it was not uh, ah by the yeah. way that's it, the computerized election is a tingog platform that was realized also uh -huh. during a tingog administration other schools are even manual yeah. so that is another innovation but even our, our counting before when we were still manual our quick we had a quick count mechanism we had we had trending we had a program that trended even Comelec didn't have it <laughs> and then how we how we took care of our supporters there was always there was always a lot of food yeah. there was always the chon and <laughs> microwave ovens and, and then you say so shag but you know what and they tried some some the other party tries to make it an issue, but for me, no, it is not an issue. It is for me a testament to how we are, yeah. how we are committed to innovation. That even within the party, we strive to innovate. If we're the first to do it, it's not only social; it's just the right thing to do, exactly, right? Exactly. And if we can come up with all these bright ideas for our party, for our platforms, for our campaign, how much more when when in the student council, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes, Mike. Yes. <laughs> so you know, you talk about your, some of your platforms. So, for this year, yeah, uh, if, yeah. So let's start. Abtik Pinoy. It's uh, it's actually a an action to the social challenge that most of us, or siguro a lot of us, are the, our interest in national issues or social issues are not just are not cultivated, not cultivated. So that's why this platform aims to address this social challenge. Another platform that is probably probably close to my heart is Inovcon because I'm a person who actually admires people who creates new ideas. New ideas doesn't have to be doesn't have to come out out of nowhere. New, new ideas can can actually be old ideas, but just being tweaked. So I believe Inovcon is a manifestation of our freedom so to Inovcon express is ourselves. Like an innovation convention. Yes. Talk about ideas, not just our ideas as the officers, but of course everyone's ideas. Because in the council, it's an it's an inclusive council. We talk up. We want to respect everyone's ideas because I believe no one has the monopoly of the pot of power, information, and knowledge. So those are very specific programs of action because you even have names for them. Yes. And then I know that this time uh, you actually um, sh you made a shift, no? Uh, you push for the Magna Carta, Magna Carta, and as we speak, hopefully it's being approved, no? Yes. Um, and now you mentioned over the break that aside, you're inspired by this uh, uh, by this uh, triumph. Yeah. And hopefully, you know the, the student so council really sees it. it through, yes. and that um, the admin, you know, that everyone fights for the not just the approval of the Magna Carta, but the implementation, yeah, sure. no? and then the review of the student manual. Yes. But you mentioned over the break that you also want to champion constitutional reform, yes, to amend the SEC Constitution of 2001, yes. which, by the way, was also an amendment introduced by Tino. It was during the administration of. N now attorney Leslie uh, John Cordero uh, she was president then and then why do you want to amend it it well, was a thing of administration constitution but why do you want to amend it, it it's simple uh, what year are we right now it's 2016 that was tw that was 15 years ago there are a lot of information there or provisions that are irrelevant for example accountancy is not a college anymore it's a department under school of business and economics and in the provision it states that a collegiate council should come from accountancy which I think is not even practiced, practiced in, to this day. So there are so many provisions that we have to change and that's why for the coming academic year, we hope to revisit the constitution and make the amendments, the necessary amendments. And even international students uh, yes, who definitely. are able to vote, foreign students who are exactly. able to vote, but they cannot participate fully yes. in campus politics. Or a university. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and then we, in Tingo, we like to, we'd like to push for inclusive, inclusivity, yes. no? Uh, and, um, well, you talked about diversity, and it can only be had by a more responsive constitution. So yes. I really hope uh, that can be pushed. No? Um, and then we have our alumni. Yes. So you have you have you have the support of the alumni through yeah. through it all, right? We have so much support from all 
batches 2002, 2001, 2000, 1980s, 1980s. <laughs> Way before you were born. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's amazing. You get to see all, you get to see Tingog leaders who were there before you were born. Tingog leaders who championed students' rights even w before you were born. So it's just amazing. We getting have... to understand their experiences, getting to have insights from them, their wisdom. It's really just amazing. It's really just an amazing experience overall. We have a, a a a roster of outstanding alumni, outstanding not only because of what they've achieved, but because of their desire to give back, yeah. and that is uh, that is unique. That is unique. No, the intention to pay, always pay it forward because they give credit to Tingo for starting it. No, um, so you know you have. D different uh, backgrounds. So you have Emmy Albano. She was my staff in the U uh, in the in the in government and and when I was managing a UN fund. And now she's with UNICEF. Before that, she was with the UN Population Fund. And she was uh, a provinciana from Sultan Kudarat, Kalamansi, Sultan Kudarat. And <coughs> before that, before you know it, she was advising no less than the UN Population Fund Executive Director in New York. No, and then Leslie Cordero was president of the Student Council. Um, she 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 worked as undersecretary uh, for disaster uh, response, no, uh, Reco re rehab and recovery, and now she's with the World Bank. Ryan Villaflores, who's always very active, uh, you know, meeting me with you guys. He was a global director of Unilever. Never. Jude Medida was president of the Student Council. He now heads the entire training academy of of the entire Shangri-La chain of hotels, no, the Shangri-La Academy, and and so many more, no. Yeah. So. Uh, and then at attorney Glinda Batan, uh, now she has committed more than a decade of her life to, to pushing for clean air, you know, clean uh, for, for governments, not just in, in the, you know, not just the Philippines, but in Asia and Europe, crafting their clean air uh, policies. So this is really, you know, from, from student council work outside, outside. They're, they're really making a difference. Um, so again, it's never enough because I'm so talkative. Especially when you're talking about Tingog. Uh, so we have to pause again for another short break. Open mic, we'll be right back. We're back here at Open Mic with my Tingog Carolingian family. And we were talking about alumni, no? and uh, with us today is uh, one of my dearest friends. He's also a Tingog alumnus. Uh, Eric Lim, and uh, very proud because uh, after leave, he was president, he was counselor in the student council, and was president of Saibe, uh, past president of Saibe, and the first president when it became Saibe, no. And then now he's opening his mall. We'll have him on the show later on uh, in the future. He's opening his mall across uh, Marina Mall in uh, in uh, Mactan, no. And I think in the news today is uh, that uh, service, the shuttle service. Uh, it's a ferry shuttle service to help ease the traffic because of the repairs in the in the two bridges, no? Um, so, uh, there's a fast craft service that will uh, ply the Lapu-Lapu City to Pier Uno route, no? To help ease the traffic. And that's his idea. And that's in his mall. So, you see, even outside, we come up with innovative solutions to pressing problems. That's Eric. Pan the camera. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, what what are issue? I mean, na am going issue tanong party. And before, uh, it's really a funny issue that they throw against Tingog. I don't know if it's still the issue that they, the other parties throw against us now. Yeah. Elitista. That's is somehow it, is true. It, yeah, they actually call us elitista. Sometimes they even tell it's us. It's not true that we're elitista, but it's true that they call us yeah, elitista. Yeah, they even tell uh, Tingog is guapa guapo. But I think that, that, that's not right. Uh, I think, yeah, is it our fault that. Yeah, we just we're just so blessed to have. <laughs> well, my, my point being, <laughs> well, my point is that these people, yeah, we want to serve the Carolinian community, and I think it we, we shouldn't be discriminated by how we look. Or like no, how, but we are a bunch of people who come from different backgrounds. Yeah. No, uh, that's a for me. That's a it when they call us elitista, it only means they have nothing else to say. They have nothing else to throw against us because that's a very superficial, uh, uh, you know, uh, attack. And you know, ang tingog, you talked about we talk about diversity a lot because we are really diverse. Yes. We are as diverse as it gets. You know, Glenda Gaisano is a Gaisano, is tingog. She was an SSC counselor. But we also have people. We ha we also have members, very active members, 
who 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 are who are not as uh, privileged in life, who come from uh, uh, depressed areas. We don't discriminate, and we can all work together. And that's what's more important, and that's even what's more beautiful. Yeah. That regardless of the social class, regard regardless of your background, we can all come together and and work toward a common goal. No. Yeah. And I think it goes back to Tingog's way of getting people and like screening people. And it's always about their principles or the commitment to serve the Carolinian yes. community. So it's not really about if you're rich, you're poor, yeah. you're guapa. Some are good looking, yeah. yes, some are. But that's not the reason why they're recruited. Exactly, exactly. Some are good, very good looking, but you do not discriminate against them just because they're good looking. If Amen. they have something to offer, why not? Right? If they want to make a commitment to improving how they are as, a, as, you know, as people, as individuals, why not? We will support that. But we, you know, even our... Our faces are very different. <laughs> you know, Step is from Africa. <laughs> and he, no, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, but Step, I'm sure has some blood that's that's not from here. <laughs> but he plays a very important a role. role in Tingog, yeah. and we do we do not discriminate against him seriously. Yes. <laughs> Jokingly, yes. Jokingly, yes. <laughs> but we love Step, yes. no? And my friend Ivan Ison, who, <laughs> who you know, he was kind of your batch, right? Yeah, he's your batch, 1986, right? Yeah. Oh. And then uh, Year of the Tiger. See, even Ivan, he was, he was pissed at me, but he's one of my dearest friends to this day. <laughs> Peace, man. <laughs> so, yes, we are very diverse. We are very diverse. I can hear Step uh, complaining. <laughs> and then, in fact, I think, uh, am I correct? Uh, this elitista tag, the accusation that we're elitista, is is uh, is bolstered. I think one of the one of the maybe no. Correct me if I'm wrong. That one of the things that may be bolstered no this this uh, accusation from the other party that we're elitista is the honorary members program. Yeah, I've heard some talks like they keep they keep throwing it at throwing it to to Tingog that. Why do you have Piolo with you? Why do you have Grace Paul with you, our senator? Why do you have Boyabunda with you? And that's why uh, when I when we actually when I why when not I, yeah, right? why, why not? not why not yeah these people are big names in our nation and for them to associate themselves with Tingog that's a testament to our brand of leadership. You know I, I take uh, responsibility for that because it's that was it's it's my program. <laughs> uh, because we come up with different programs. You have infrastructure. You have, uh, you know, uh, human development uh, uh, platforms. You have policy shifts, like constitutional change, and then you have other things, you know, that make human interaction more meaningful. And these are big names who have a lot of insight, who you know, who have experienced a lot in life, and we'd like to bring them to USC, and especially to Tingog, and and so that they can meet different people. Uh, from different fields who are accomplished, who have maintained their credibility, who have maintained uh, their commitment to, to, to you know, using their, their celebrity, their sway, lending their sway to worthwhile causes. And if, but, I, if, I, if I could also add, it's actually a privilege for me because some of my friends actually told me, wow, it's, it's, a really op it's a really great opportunity to have these people here in USC because it's not every day that you get to see these different types of people in the industry talking about their visions, talking about their platforms, the things that they're talking about. Uh, yes, and uh, they don't to come to USC to entertain. Exactly. You know? Sometimes they entertain on the side, yes. but, but they're there, they deliver, you know, uh, inspirational message. And Anyway, it started because Boy Abunda, and this is this is again a testament, no, not an indictment to you know against Tingog, but more a testament to to the quality of of, uh, of the uh, you know of the party and the excellence uh, to which we uh, to, to which we subscribe to. Um, but si Boy was really angaling, angaling ng, ng Tingog. It's so nice that you know the students are being given the opportunity to develop and hone their leadership skills, and at the same time you have alumni. Who, <coughs> who really, uh, who desire to, to give back. And so I want to meet them. So, and I thought, you know what? Why don't we come up with a program? With stringent rules. No, it's not just any celebrity can be an honorary member. We deliberate. We deliberate strongly, we debate on it. No? So anyway, Boy became honorary member. And then we, Tingog actually, uh, I don't know if Boy would remember this, but Tingog was one of the nominators uh, to the UN Population Fund. 
that nominated him as UN Goodwill Ambassador. And now, he has become an active spokesperson on adol uh, adolescent reproductive health no? and, and, and HIV AIDS. So, he is really helping make a difference. No? And then, Bianca Gonzalez was UNICEF. Rocky Vega, always, no? with Haribon Foundation. Piolo was the same. In fact, he was conferred as Haribon Ambassador with me in USC. No, and when, when I brought him to USC, he spoke in the first International Students' Night. He did not charge a single cent. And you have A1, the British boy band. People said, oh, what's up? Choy ng tingo? No, they were building, they were building a, a community in uh, Olango. See, Michael Karandang, Emmy, you know, he's an Emmy Award-winning producer of Tyre, the Tyra Banks show and, uh, and uh, uh, America's Next Top Model, global Filipino. We espouse a global mindset. So, why not? You know, have someone speak on, on the matter. Senator Grace Poe, uh, not everyone, not everyone in Tingog supports her presidential bid because, you know, we did not uh, decide on who to support no? because there are some who are for Duterte, some are for Grace Poe, uh, but I think everyone is against someone. <laughs> uh, 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 no, I think no, there's two of them who are for him, but, uh, but we share certain attributes with Senator Grace Poe. Ding Dong Dantes is not just an actor, he National is Youth National Youth, Youth Com yes. Commission Commissioner. No? So, these people are not just celebrities, they are incidentally celebrities. And they have, uh, uh, they have made sure that they use their, their popularity their influence. Yeah, for, for you know, promoting uh, worthwhile causes. So, I beg to differ. You know? I mean, uh, ang ako, you on this. Yeah. Ang ako lang is, if you can, why not? Maybe the bigger question is, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> if you can invite your you know, honorary members to your party, then by all means, copy yes. our format. <laughs> right? But uh, that's it. No? There's, we covered uh, party principles. We started in 1988. Our alumni, track record, platforms, uh, your, your plans yes. uh, for the future. And we talked about our, alum, uh, our honorary members possible, you know, the, the issues that they throw against yes. us. What about your vision, Brett? Because uh, I've, I've heard your speech and you talk about leadership as uh, that, that one integral uh, component or facet of, what, uh, of leadership is that a leader has to have a vision. Yes, yes. So, what is your vision for USC? Our vi vision is very simple. Our vision is, that, is to have a student council that is responsive to our needs now but more importantly, looks ahead to the future. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we need a student council that taps the potentials of every student because we recognize that everyone is a potential. You can be an amazing accountant, an amazing businessman, an entrepreneur, an advocate for, an advocate for education, an advocate for healthcare and profession. What I'm trying to say is that you are a potential. You don't have to be a leader who, who is good at management. The conventional sense. Compass. Exactly. The leadership yeah. in the conventional Everyone sense. Everyone has potentials and it's just by tapping these potentials that we're able to bring out the best, the better versions of ourselves, better versions of Carolinians. And ultimately, that's our goal. That's our vision for the coming academic year. Yeah, the Tingog experience is such that we all started, I think, a lot, uh, you know, especially the alumni when we, when we share our thoughts, no? Uh, when we got because we gather we converge regularly I think uh, one common uh, story is that one common uh, sharing no, is that we all started in USC whatever our experience in high school no matter how stellar uh, your your academic performance was in high school or even if you like I participated in the City Olympics I've forgotten about that no you were uh... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was in the track. Track? Oh. Yeah, and swimming. <laughs> track, imagine. swimming, you can't imagine? Can't imagine. Let's, <laughs> let's run. Track, swimming, and scrabble. But anyway, what <laughs> 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 whatever, the, whatever uh, you experience in high school, though sacred, no? high school was a very sacred time, but thing of US in, okay. in USC, it's really, you used it before, an incubator. It really yeah. is an incubator. Uh, for dreams, dreams. You know, an incubator for uh, skills and uh, a sense of discipline. Yes. You know what? Before, before you know, my, my high school classmates, I was all, always loud and and, you know, and and I always stood out in not <laughs> not always in a good way. 
because I was always very talkative. It shows. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> <laughs> not always in a good way. But uh, and then and then in college, not the most studious, not the most uh, responsible student. And sometimes I look back with regret, no. But no, it came at a right time, you know, the right point in my life. And I joined Tingog, and from there, it changed my life. And onwards and upwards for me. So I'm happy that uh, you know we have our Tingo Carolina family here, and uh, there are you know uh, 20, 22, 23 stories uh, here, uh, 22, 23 stories or lives that have changed, that are changing, that are in the process of changing. But we are not just student council. Yeah. Like we say, we are Tingo. Guess what? We are leaders, mentors, volunteers. It's not just the candidates who make us up. It is the, the people who support us, those who do not run, yes. those who have no personal stake. Right. But I could even share who, who our campaign contribute. managers are very, very supportive. They ignite our. St uh, it's, 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 them, it's them. It's all about them. Whenever we feel so down, they have their energy is even higher than ours, and they just ignite us. They inspire us to to go room after room after room after room and. And somehow you feel and bisaya ka nang maikog ka because these people have so much energy and yet you are there wanting to sleep. So in a way, they inspire you and of course and they're they part do. of and they're so so much part of Tingog as we are. Yes. They are as much a part of Tingog as the candidates no? and those who make it to the student council. And on that note, join us before we close. All of you here. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Thank Mike. you so much for Thank your you. time. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's my, <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure. And Cebu, this has been Mike Lopez, and it has been my honor and privilege to introduce to you my Tingog Carolinian family. Oh. Family, because this is the Tingog Carolinian party of USC. But for me, it is a, for first and foremost a family. The very best thing that has happened to me. Oh. <laughs> because with. Tingog, JD, and Brett, we are all set! Make Tingog your voice! Make Tingog your choice! Good night and Godspeed! Bye bye! bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>